In this video, I'll show you how to add multi-language translation to your React website using a powerful library called React i18 Next. This is one of the most popular and professional ways to make your website support multiple languages. The first thing we need to do is install the translation libraries. Open your terminal inside your React project and run this command. This package connects the translation system to React. It gives us the use translation hook, so we can easily use translations inside our components. I18 next, this is the core translation engine. It manages all your languages, text keys and switching between languages. Once it's installed, we can set up a new file called i18n.js inside the SRC folder. This file will contain all the configuration for our translations. Here we import the main i18 next instance from i18 next and also init react i18 neck which connects i18 next to react components. We use init react i18 next as a plugin and then call the init function to configure our translations and languages. The resources object contains all our available languages. Each language code, like N, A, R, E, S, has a translation object inside it with the text we want to show in that language. For example, in English our navbar has three items, home, about and contact, and our hero section has a title and subtitle. We repeat the same structure for Arabic, Spanish, German and French, LNG means the default language. Here, it's English. If a translation is missing, it will fall back to English using fallback LNG. This setting prevents React from escaping special characters. It's safe to set it to false in React apps. All right, now let's create our navigation bar for the multi-language React website. Inside the Source Components folder, Create a new file called navbar.jx. This file will contain all the code for our responsive navigation bar with a built-in language switcher using i18 Next. First, we import Use Translation from React i18 Next. This hook will allow us to access translations directly inside our component. Here, we call use translation to get two important things. T, which we use to display translated text, and I18, which gives us access to the current language and language change functions. This function changes the website's language when the user selects a new one. If the selected language is Arabic, we switch the text direction to right to left. RTL. Otherwise it stays left to right. We define a list of supported languages, each one with its code, display name and flag emoji. Now let's move on to the next section, our hero component. Inside the components folder, create a new file called hero.jxk. This section will display the main title, subtitle, buttons and some statistics, all dynamically translated based on the selected language. We start by importing Use Translation from React i18 next, so we can use translations inside our component. We also import two icons, Arrow Right and Play Circle, from Lucid React, which we'll use for our buttons. 
Next, we define a helper function called getByTurnInstructs. This function checks the current language and returns the correct translation for our button labels and the badge text. We do something similar for our stats section. Each language has its own labels for the statistics, like happy clients, projects done, or in Espanol, clientes felices. This makes the section feel fully localized for each language. Now that we've finished building our navbar and hero components, let's connect everything together inside our main app.jx file. First, we import our i18n configuration file. This line is very important. It initializes the translation system when the app loads. Without this, our website won't know how to switch between languages. Next, we import the two main components we created earlier the navbar that contains our language selector, and the hero section that displays the translated content. Before you run the project, don't forget to install one more package we used for icons. It's called Lucide React. Thank you.